newscast first. Good evening to you. I'm meteorologist Craig Flint. Another great day, but the clouds are coming in and eventually wet weather too. So we look downtown right now uh, and uh, you can see the clouds increasing not far away is the rain that will be developing here as we go into the evening. There might even be a thunderstorm, an isolated thunderstorm to the south of the throughway. Mild tonight, lows mid 40s. Eyewitness News starts right now. Local news that matters. This is Eyewitness News at 6 on WUTR. Tonight on Eyewitness News at 6, earlier today, 52 people in Utica became new citizens of the United States. We'll bring you a look inside that ceremony. And a ban on burning brush takes effect in New York this weekend. We'll bring you the latest details from DEC Commissioner Seagos. Plus, Senator Chuck Schumer making waves on Capitol Hill by calling for Israel to elect a new leader. We'll bring you the latest from Washington. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight for Eyewitness News at 6. I'm Shelby Pay. 52 people in Utica celebrated becoming United States citizens earlier today. Our Eyewitness News reporter Jessica Landman attended that ceremony and now brings us the details. In Utica's U.S. federal court today, 52 immigrants were granted citizenship during their naturalization ceremony. Representing over 20 countries, this is not only a good day for Utica, but a very important day in these people's lives. One man from India was overjoyed to become an official citizen today. I am very lucky. My husband very good. Yes. I am very happy in that today I am citizenship to I thanks in the America. America. Yes. Mary John, America. <laughs> this is not the first naturalization ceremony, and it certainly won't be the last, as more and more immigrants earn the right to become an American citizen. Reporting in Utica, I'm Jessica Landman, Eyewitness News. Congratulations to them all. Also happening today, the Mohawk Valley Institute for Learning in Retirement hosted their open house for spring, allowing members to sign up for their classes. Eyewitness News reporter Jessica Landman also has that story. MVILR is hosting the registration today at the MVCC campus in Rome. Located right here on the campus in Rome, MVILR offers retirees a chance to learn new things, explore their passions, and meet new people. Um, we are all about lifelong learning. So after college, high school, whatever uh, education you have, a lot of people think that that's the end of it because they go into the workforce, but after the workforce, there's always time to learn more for fun. You don't need another degree, you don't need another certification. Sometimes you can just sit down, make new friends, and learn something just because you enjoy learning and hanging out with other people. So MVILR is dedicated to that concept. With several classes and a plethora of subjects, there is something for everyone. So we have over 150 classes throughout the year um, and with our, the way we're set up is you don't pay per class, you pay for one membership and then you take as many of those courses that you can fit in your schedule. So we have stuff across the board. We have selected battles of the Pacific War if you're interested in history. We have music of the 60s if you're interested in music or we have opera classes. Uh, we learn uh, how to acrylic landscape paint, basic drawing. If you're interested in art, we have basic card making if you're into crafts. Um, we have a class called Be Fit, Strong, and Balanced if you're looking for exercise classes. Uh, so we have really, if you name it, either we have it or we're willing to find somebody who's interested. Yeah. MVILR will welcome any retirees with open arms. Reporting in Rome, I'm Jessica Landman, Eyewitness News. And an important reminder that a ban on burning brush takes effect in New York this weekend. The ban will run from this Saturday, March 16th, through May 14th. Open burning of debris is the single largest cause of spring wildfires in New York State. Department of Environmental Conservation officials say the ban decreases those risks by 40 percent, increases air quality, and saves emergency resources. Think about the impacts uh, to government resources when there is a wildfire and we see these fires that range from a couple of acres you know all the way up to several thousand acres uh, that can demand a huge amount of, uh, of government resources. 
grills, cooking fires, and campfires under three feet tall are still allowed. Anyone found in violation of the ban, though, will face a $500 fine. And Senator Chuck Schumer making national news. The top Democrat in Congress is making waves on Capitol Hill. The Senate Majority Public Ally critici criticizing Israel's Prime Minister's handling of the war in Gaza and calling for the country to elect a new leader. Here's D.C.'s Raquel Martin with more. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer says it's time for new leadership in Israel. Prime Minister Netanyahu has lost his way. Schumer is the highest ranking Jewish official in the U.S. In a speech on the Senate floor, Schumer said Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and his government are endangering the state of Israel by refusing to protect civilians in Gaza and by rejecting any peace plan that creates a Palestinian state. Which is pushing support for Israel worldwide to historic lows. Schumer says Israelis should elect a new leader once the war winds down. The Netanyahu coalition no longer fits the needs of Israel after October 7th. The senator's suggestion sparked immediate backlash from Republicans. It is grotesque. Also on the Senate floor, Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell said Schumer's remarks undermine Israel's democracy and threaten its alliance with the U.S. Israel is not a colony of America whose leaders serve at the pleasure of the party in power in Washington. Miles away at an annual retreat in West Virginia, House Republicans, including Speaker Mike Johnson, piled on. It is just plain wrong for an American leader to play such a divisive role in Israeli politics. I believe that he should apologize. President Biden has aired his own frustrations over Netanyahu's leadership of the war, but the State Department distanced itself from Schumer's comments. These are, these are statements made by Senator Schumer, not by uh, the uh, Biden administration. In Washington, Raquel Martin. We'll have all of those stories and much more available on our website, cnyhomepage.com. Another beautiful day yeah, today. Not You're not kidding. Into the uh, low 60s again. Mm -hmm. But you can see the change coming. I know. I love having my sunroof open, though. Yeah, you were able to do that. <laughs> Um, the clouds are now moving in, so as these clouds increase, that's the first sign that, okay, something's up. Eventually, we're going to get some wet weather, but it's still not bad out there. Uh, we'll talk about uh, the timing of the rain. Look ahead to the St. Patrick's Day weekend in the forecast coming up next.